Hello and welcome to a very special How I Paint Things. Now today we're going to tackle the Sisters of Battle, the Order of the Bloody Rose. And I love this armor color. Um, it's very similar in a lot of respects to the Blood Angels. And honestly, if you wanted to paint them, you could use the same technique. It looks great. Very simple and quick to do. Now this video in particular, I am going to end up doing a lot more on this model than I normally would. Um, and I don't mean that for my own armies, I mean that, well, sisters have got a lot happening on them. So we're going to tackle this as simply as possible. And remember always that we are just putting layers of paint on a model. So step by step, you know, I'm going to show you how to get this result. It's not the fastest way, but I think it's going to look pretty bleeding good <laughs> when you're done. So as always, all of the paints will be listed in the description below. Grab your brushes, let's get started. Now to start off with, I've given her a primer of Mephiston Red, but I've actually done it over Wraithbone. Now ordinarily you don't need to use um, a white or a black primer before adding on one of the color primers, you know, they are all designed to go on bare plastic. But you will get a slightly brighter finish on the red if you do decide to start from a white primer. So that's what I've done in this case. I think you can still see some of it peeking through in some areas, but it's not really important. I just wanted a brighter Mephiston red finish to begin with. What we're going to start with is actually her cape. Now for this we're going to use Corax white and it is important that if you've got some spare bits that you can chuck in there, you know, either an agitator, a stainless steel bearing or even an old space marine head, you do want something to keep this uh, mixing properly because Corax white can go a little funny. But we'll water that down just a little and then start applying it to the cape. Now we're doing this first rather than her armor because say for example on the back of her cape you know, sort of tucked away in behind her legs here if I hold it like this you can't see in there oh well um, but if I'm painting in here you know and I should hit her leg or something in the process it's not too hard to reach her leg later with some red to tidy it up but if I paint her armor first and then I want to paint the white in then I've got to be super careful not to hit the armor, you see. So in this case, we're really just laying down the base work for something we're not going to do a huge amount with. But as you see, this will probably take just the one coat in some areas. But if you do want to make sure you've got a nice solid color, make sure I let it dry, come back and give it a second. Now, I don't know what I was thinking saying one coat. It's definitely two. Uh, if you are careful with it though, you won't have much to tidy up. So you'll see if I tilt her all the way back, you get a glimpse of some red under her cape there. But we're never going to see that. And remember, we are painting for the tabletop here. So I've got now a little Mephiston red. We're going to put the robes aside for a moment, and we'll concentrate instead on her armor. So what I'm going to do is use this just to fill in uh, some areas I might have missed with the primer, and fix up any little mistakes Oops, with the uh, white. So you don't need to be you know, particularly sparing or careful with this. All you're doing, let's just tidy up that red. Now one of my favorite things about the Order of the Bloody Rose is the fact that their sort of corset section around their waist is the same color as the rest of their armor, so we don't have to faff around trying to, <laughs> trying to reach that with a brush. It can just stay red. What we'll do now, though, is let's paint the edges of our armor. And I've got Kindle Flame, which is a dry paint. I've got one of my little makeup brushes here. And the reason why we're going to use this is that these things are really soft. So you will find it difficult to apply too much off of your dry brush. So once I've worked some into my bristles there, let's just dry brush the edge of the base. We're going to get a fairly light orange on the side there. Now what you want to do is angle your brush so that you're going across any areas of detail. So for example on her backpack here is a really good place to show this. We can catch the top of that uh, buttons. What would you call that? <laughs> that section there let's just say. Then do the same by coming at it from the opposite angle. Get around the outside. So you see we're faking a nice hard red highlight. Now on areas like these big bobble things, we're going to get a bit of chalkiness, but that's okay. We'll fix that up in a few seconds. What you want to do now is go around the whole model and find any hard edges where you want to fake 
that highlight. So you'll see on the back of her leg here, you can catch the corner of her boots and so forth. Again, don't worry if you do end up making it a little orange, sort of chalky in areas that you don't necessarily want that highlight. We will fix those up. There is a trick to that. Now, generally speaking with the sisters, you'll find they don't have a huge amount of exposed armor. So that's generally pretty quick. Now, areas where I don't want quite so much chalkiness, I'll just go back to a little bit of my fist on red. And I can tidy those up. Nice and simple. This is great for areas like on her shins here. Uh, along those, uh, here's a good spot. Here's one where you want to catch the edge and get that fake highlight. But you don't want maybe her whole shin in that color. So just go back with your base coat and tidy those up if you need to. Now I've got some Karaberg Crimson, and we're going to use this over all of the red armor. I've given this a really good shake, and let's just start applying this. You see how quickly that works? Oh, it's lovely. Uh, try and be careful near your white, uh, because you don't want to have to tidy it up any more than you need to. There we go. Um, but anywhere like a gun or a face or what have you, don't worry about that. Just bucket this stuff on. Now there we have it, nice red armor, really quickly. If you were to ask how I would paint Blood Angels, it would probably be like that. Now what I'm going to do is all of the other base coats. So we'll start off with a face. Uh, reason being, if we you know make a mistake, oh I've got some on her hair, it doesn't matter at this stage, we can paint the hair later. So just a little bit of Bugman's glow in here. Now we're going to base coat all of the metal areas. And because she's generally shown as having quite bright metal, we're going to use Iron Hand Steel for most of this. Uh, you can do obviously her bolter, uh, these little icons and what have you, though I will switch to a smaller brush <laughs> before I do more of that. Little wingerlings, and so forth. Uh, then I'm going to swap to Iron Warriors, which is this much darker, almost black silver. Um, and I'll just do the little the cabling around her neck in that. But take your time with this, because we're starting to reach the stage where we don't want to have to tidy anything up. Now, if there is a time-consuming stage in this whole process, it's going to be that silver. Uh, you do need to be fairly careful with it, and most importantly, you need a nice solid color. So it is going to take at least two coats in some areas. Make sure that you are spending that time on it. Finally, though, we're going to start filling in some of these black areas. And for this, I'm going to use my Vallejo Flat Black. Uh, reason being, the coverage on this is just a little better than uh, a Baden Black, and when necessary, I don't want to spend the time doing two or three coats on things. I want to be able to put this on just one go and walk away from it. So on goes your black, your bolter casings. Now these sleeves, um, I wasn't sure whether or not to mention it. I know some folks like to do white under here as well. Um, I would recommend that for your bulk infantry, um, don't worry about it. Save that for your sergeants and your characters and what have you, because, my goodness, you know, <laughs> anywhere that you can shave a couple of seconds off is going to save you time in the long run, especially across a whole army. So anywhere that you want to be black, funnily enough, let's fill it in now black with black. Now we're still being a little bit messy with our application here. You'll see that I have gone over a couple of the silver areas, in particular this little doubler uh, icon or whatever you'd call it. Uh, but that is, you know, still what we're doing is laying down base coats. What we'll do now is I'm going to introduce you to your favorite color you didn't know existed. This is Cavalry Brown. This is a Vallejo color. And it's quite close to, uh, I would say, Doombull Brown but it's a little bit more red, and that's ideal for what I've got in mind with these gloves. What we'll do is just give a quick coat of that. You'll see this doesn't change up the red very much. This is a beautiful red leather color. Now with that done, let's get that ceramite white out again. Sorry, Corax white now. And we'll fill in her hair, and we'll do the tidy up on some of these white areas that we might have made a few little whoops moments on.
Now we're getting there, <laughs> you know. These uh, these modern Games Workshop sculpts seem like they have a lot of extra detail, so there's a bit more fussing around with them, I'd say. I've got now, this is a Vallejo color. This is black gray. Uh, you could use Corvus Black if you wanted to. What I'm gonna do is just pick out some of the areas which are gonna be slightly raised on this cape. Now this dries much darker than it looks. All I'm gonna do is just find some of those areas where I wanna accentuate the shape of the folds. Now you don't have to do very much of this because remember we are gonna shade this and bring it all back down closer to black again. But just any areas like this where you want a little bit more variation in color. You can add some black gray. That's a slightly better look at how that's gonna come out. What I've got now is my iron hand steel again, and here comes the fun part of the job. We're gonna dot in carefully, very carefully, so carefully I don't touch it, <laughs> every single rivet, button, what have you, on her cape, her sleeves, her gloves. Okay, this is time consuming, but I promise you it's worth it. And if you do make any mistakes, you can just grab your black or whatever base color again. Now, just before calling all of those base coats finished, I got out some Retributor armor and a little bit of Mechanica standard gray just for this thing she's standing on. What I'm gonna do now is actually hit the whole model with some uh, Munitorum varnish spray, because I wanna change how the shade is gonna react over some of these surfaces. It doesn't matter if I do the whole thing, of course, you know, we'll bring it down with a matte varnish later, but let's just hit the whole thing Make it nice and shiny. Now the bonus with a satin varnish, or even a gloss, is that it changes how light reacts with our miniature. So in particular on the white, you know, the way that it changes how light sort of bounces around on there, the white looks whiter than white. It is so crisp. Now I thought I was gonna go ahead and shade the robes, but after the varnish, I actually quite how like how that's turned out. So instead, I'm gonna leave them as is, and I'm gonna use non oil here, I'm gonna shade all of the metal, and I will shade uh, the leather stuff as well, so this dark brown leather. And once we've finished that, we'll give that a few minutes to dry, come back and get a look at what that looks like. Now we're starting to get somewhere. <laughs> what we'll do now is just a few highlights to really make her sing. So I'm gonna flip her upside down, and I'm actually gonna start with, go back to our white again. What we'll do is just a few quick flicks of white. Doesn't matter if they're particularly straight or even, but just head up towards its center part and you can do as much or as little of this as you like. And then we'll use a little bit of Stormhost Silver to edge some of the Silver details, funnily enough. Up to you how much of this you use. You could go back to uh, Iron Hand Steel, but I like really sharp, really bright color for this. And then finally, we'll get just a little bit of Dawnstone using the very edge of our brush just to do some of these hard black areas. If you wanted to, you could, you know, really go in on the edges of things on the cape and what have you, but I don't think you're gonna need to. Now, if we look at the leather on her holster here, this is a really good example. Because we've used a matte shade over the top of uh, a gloss varnish or a satin varnish, there's a bit of disconnect between the surfaces. You know, we have a slightly matte finish and then we've got the satin. So what I am gonna do, because I personally, I prefer the look for my miniatures, I'm actually gonna hit her with a matte varnish. So I'm gonna finish that off, and then we'll go ahead and I'll apply her base, and we'll get a look at what she looks like when she's all finished. And then at last, our sister of battle is complete. Now I know someone is gonna ask, why didn't I shade the robes? And there is a very simple answer. I'm lazy. You could, if you wanted to, uh, shade them with null oil at the same stage that we did with the hair, and highlight them in the same way. But all that's gonna do is, to be quite honest, just bring up these uh, buttonholes a little bit. And 
it's not worth the extra work, especially at table distance. You know, when we put her at arm's length and we play some games, she's going to look fantastic on the table and I can save myself all of that time. If you really wanted to, maybe get some apothecary white, you know, the contrast color, and just run that into the buttonholes. That should be fine. So hopefully something there was interesting to you. As always, thank you very much to Exit 23 Games for the light and sound equipment, as well as all the lovely patrons who help keep me in paints and glue, including producers Alan Nuttall, Ben Hicks, Kyrie Crawford, and Trainboy. Any questions or anything, feel free to drop them in the old comments box below. My Twitter and Facebook are both linked there too. So thank you very much for your time, and you all enjoy the rest of your day.